Did you hear this thing about ICANN taking over the internet, specifically the U.S. government letting the contract to have them somewhat moderate the internet expiring and, and the U.S. government letting them take it over entirely? Yeah, didn't we have a conversation about this uh, just last week? Hmm, maybe. Just last week, in fact, we had Carl Auerbach, who was talking a little bit about what ICANN does. Now, this story just came out last week, and it's about the United States government not really doing anything big. They're, they're essentially following up on a promise that they made back in 2006. Now, ICANN stands for the Internet Corporation for Assigned Names and Numbers. It's a California-based nonprofit that is responsible for overseeing identifiers on the Internet. That means top-level domains, it means IPv4, IPv6, handing out those blocks to the different registrars so that they can make sure that servers get the addressing space and the identifying space that they need to make the internet work. Well, back in 2006, ICANN signed an agreement with the United States Department of Commerce that would move it towards autonomy, full autonomy, allowing them to manage those assets through what they call the multi-stake model, multi-stakeholder model. Now, that move is now complete. Achiever, let me ask you, from an IT geek's perspective, does this really change anything? I mean, if you're just a, a standard IT administrator and you're worried about your domain, you're worried about your IPv6 addresses, this, this isn't going to do anything that you have to worry about, right? Well, it, it, the change is going to be very subtle um, because a lot of the changes are going to be if we have a multi-stakeholder environment, it's not going to have the regulatory flavor. Um, that we had previously. So immediately, no, you're probably not going to see a thing change. Uh, over time, maybe, because now we're going to start seeing a lot more market pressures shaping how ICANN runs. And, uh, you know, we'll see. It's, it's one of those wait and see things. Curtis, I want to throw this over to you. Back in uh, 2013, ICANN was part of the, uh, the multi-signator Montevideo Agreement where basically in response to the NSA spying, they agreed to create a, well, a proposal that solved for four things, specifically four things. One, warning against internet fragmentation because of trust issues. In other words, countries breaking off their own internet because they can't trust the global internet anymore. Two, that there needed to be an ongoing effort to care for the internet. Three, that equal footing needed to, to be allowed for all stakeholders in the internet. And four, that there was a continued push to transition for IPv6. This seems to be just that, right? I mean, this, this is a really good move towards that. If, if the United States government is saying, well, we no longer have any sort of authority over the handing out of address blocks or TLDs, that falls right in with the Montevideo statement, yes? It does indeed. Now, I'm going to agree with Chebert about something. The, the concerns that I have, and I think the concerns that a, an, an enterprise might have, isn't about what this means in the short term. I think probably over the next, we'll call it 12 to 24 months, there will be no significant change. Uh, no change that most enterprises, most individuals would notice at all. The place that this gets interesting is when you we start getting into what's included in the all stakeholders and the ongoing efforts to develop global care of the internet. Because thus far, the internet has been developed by and large based on U.S. or North American and Western Europe standards of open information flow and care for everyone there. But those values, while they aren't uniquely North American, aren't universal either. And so there is some concern that down the road there could be much more serious attempts to go in and take away some of the free flow to say, you know, we need more control over what transits the internet, not just the devices that connect to the internet. That's where the concerns are, and that's where I think a lot of people are taking a wait and see attitude before they declare this a good or bad thing. Okay. Chibert, I want to throw this over to you because there is a point to be made that I think a lot of people are, well, a little upset. Not necessarily because this is a bad move, but it seems as if we should be saying, look, we created the Internet. The United States created the Internet. It it's, it's follows that it's, it's ours, right? I mean, I'm playing devil's advocate here. I, this is not actually a stance I believe in. But there are going to be those who say, why should we turn things over to a world which we don't necessarily trust? We don't think they know how to run the Internet. We don't think they know how to manage it. Why should they be in charge? <laughs> so 
this is a similar argument to why everybody should speak English. Um, I'm sorry, you know, even though I love living in America, I think it's one of the best places in the world to live and all that. In the amount of travel that I've done, especially internationally, there's an awful lot of smart people out in the world, and it is in our best interest to be able to seek out those great ideas. So having the uh, you know non-Americans, uh, non-North American um, entities participate in the governance of the internet makes a whole heck of a lot of sense. In a lot of ways, the Europeans have a lot more a lot more freedom uh, in, of speech in their internet than America does. You know, they don't have a spy agency at least blatantly tapping their lines. So I like, I like the attitude of let's, let's all work together and maybe, just maybe, if we learn how to work together on the internet, maybe we can have world bees. Let me throw this over to you, Curtis. And again, I'm going to play devil's advocate here. Okay. Someone comes up to me and says, wait a minute, wait a minute. No, 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 no. North Korea shouldn't have a say in how the Internet works. Iran shouldn't have a say in the Internet works. These countries that want to censor information that everyone else thinks should be accessible by everyone on the Internet, these countries shouldn't have a say in how it works. What would you say to that? I mean, Cheaper makes a great, great statement in saying, look, this, this is how innovation flows. The, the, the multinational cooperation is how we're going to find the next thing that makes the Internet better. But what about those who are still saying, no, 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 we should decide who has a say in, in how the future Internet gets formed? Well, I, I think that Chiebert's entirely correct in that we have the potential for a much richer set of ideas and concepts governing the Internet. That's a good thing. But as you point out, we also have the possibility that some of those ideas and concepts will be diametrically opposed to the kinds of freedoms and general free flow of information that we have come to associate with the internet. So I think what we do have to figure out is how we're going to watch this develop. You know, I have an adult child, and there's an element of this that, that's like that. At a certain point, your child leaves home and becomes their own human being, their own person. It's time, I think, for the internet to get beyond a national definition this is that step, but you have to be aware that they may not go exactly where you would have them go. You gotta be okay with that even when it's painful, and it may indeed be painful a few years down the road.